The idea of adding a TKI to the treatment of acute myeloid leukaemia, it sounds good, but it's been difficult to add anything to standard therapies and, and get a significant improvement in the patch test. And so what were you trying to do in this study? We were interested to improve the data, relapse-free survival and event-free survival in patients with acute myeloid leukemia. And in fact, it's not easy to add additional uh, compound because you are adding toxicity. And the current treatment with darnerubicin RSC makes a lot of toxicity, infectious disease, complication, ablation. And therefore, it's not an easy t a task to add an additional compound. So could you tell me what you decided to do in the study? We decided to put the compound sorafenib in between uh, two induction cycles, stop the treatment of sorafenib when new chemotherapy came on board, and put it again between the consolidation cycles. And at the end, as uh, one year of treatment without any additional treatment. And the reason for using serafinib was what? Serafinib blocks several important uh, enzymes uh, in the cells which are relevant for leukemic cells. For example, the RAF pathway is blocked, VHF is blocked, and also for three mutated uh, enzymes are blocked by uh, the compound. And our interest was to have a multi-targeting compound because if you target too narrow, you are uh, target only uh, selective parts of the leukemia. And as we know that there are several clones, we would like to have a broad angel of targeted enzymes. And the evidence for thinking that serafinib had a chance of doing well was what up to now? It was uh, coming out of in vitro data, but also in single agent treatment of patients relapsing after standard treatment. And we did see efficacy in AML patients having about 10 to 20 percent complete remission rate, despite having resistant or refractory uh, disease. Uh, and therefore, it was uh, the time to add it uh, during induction chemotherapy. Now, you took younger patients with newly diagnosed acute myeloid leukemia. What happened? In the definition of younger, this would mean that I'm also still very close to be uh, young. Uh, and uh, it's below the age of 60. We do know comorbidities are increasing in the age of above 60. And in a, a, a previous trial, we did uh, see no advantage in these patients. We did even see more toxicity with hypertension and other uh, complications. And therefore, it means younger below the age of 60. And uh, the findings? The findings were we have one year of prolongation of the median relapse free survival. That's a tremendous uh, increase. And looking on event-free survival, uh, we did see that uh, it's even not uh, reached 50%. We have event-free survival of 60%, which is tremendous compared to 40% in those patients receiving placebo. Uh, overall survival was uh, not yet uh, shown uh, a significant difference. It's 7%, but that's not uh, significant in this population because our sample size with 260 overall was not large. Impressive then, in a refined clinical study, what about the real world? What do you think could be the clinical implications? The clinical implication would be if it would be a very new compound, it would get a label, the company would be interested. In an older com compound, uh, companies are not so much interested, they would like to sell a compound and uh, it's sold in some countries but overall we would be interested to have a label on it to get reimbursement and that's the important task that, therefore we will fight hard to push companies to have a label on it. So given an ideal world where that becomes possible what's your advice to clinicians about adding serafinib to therapy for AML? I'm convinced that we should uh, add it if we could have uh, could have the reimbursement for it, 
but because it costs uh, 60,000 euro per uh, patient, uh, the risk to be punished by the insurance companies or to pay it out of their own pocket is uh, too high. And therefore, as today, it's not standard of care, but it's strong evidence that it's improving event-free and relapse-free survival tremendously. So you're getting an antineoplastic effect. What about toxicities to pay for that? Toxicities are tolerable in the younger age group, below the age of 60. We have hypertension, but we can treat it. And uh, this uh, has also some abdominal toxicities, but again, which are manageable in the younger population. Do you think it could be extended to older patients? It should not be extended in combination chemotherapy. It can be extended in single agent treatment, but in combination it would be too toxic in the age above 60. So what's the take-home message for cancer doctors? The cancer doctors should know, yes, uh, multi-targeting compounds in addition to chemotherapies are increasing uh, efficacy and decreasing relapse uh, rate, but it's not the time today to get reimbursement, but we have strong evidence that we should follow the road. Mm -hmm.